Howdy! How's everybody out there? I hope you're doing well. Beautiful day in the neighborhood today. A little rain here and there. Garden loves it. We're going to get back to working on this plaque. This leather and wood plaque. Uh, as you remember yesterday, we started out with a birch board and I stained it with mahogany stain. And then I took scraps of leather from my scrap leather pile and I put them on. And there was a couple pieces that I had to trim down to fit the board. You know, just take some edges off and such so that they'd fit in here. And no, no extreme rhyme or reason to it. Uh, I just wanted straight edges along the sides of the board. Didn't want it hanging off of there. Might have a couple places that when it's all said and done that I'll need to trim, such as right up here. I see that there's just a little smidge hanging off there, and I may take a razor and, and slice that off of there, or I may leave it alone, let it look natural. Um, we'll decide when the time comes. But I took the peel and stick um, patterns in a southwest design, and I put on them, and then I took my engraving tool, and I engraved them on, and then I took the... Um, utility knife and I took the patterns off of there picked the edges up and slipped all that off and I took some uh, alcohol and put over top of it then to take the adhesive off and I see just a little piece of adhesive there that I missed I can probably get that loose with my fingernail looks like that's coming up good and then when I got all done with it I had this little corner right here that was plain just wood and I decided that I would just take another little scrap of leather and put on there, and I put a couple more designs on it and engraved them in. That kind of completes it out. But that, that little corner looked a little too naked to suit me. It was too big of a spot. This one up here at this end of it, I'm not going to worry about that. that that's fine, you know, because we have little, you know, spots here and there that's just wood. Now, I could engrave little designs in that if I wanted to, but I think it looks fine the way it is. I like the, the wood grain shining through in that. That suits me. I don't want it to look too busy. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go painting on this. Uh, and I, what I'm using for paint, this is Walburn Farms uh, gourd dye. And it's actually a leather dye, basically, is what it is. There's no real difference between this and leather dye. It's called an ink dye. I've got a lot of different colors in this, over 20 colors. Uh, so, you know, I have a lot of room to play here, and it's, I'm going to make this colorful. It's going to be a really pretty piece, I think, when I get it done. We shall see, anyway. And I'm going to move the mouse out of the way here. And I'm going to use this edge of my palette to put a little of this dye down on, just different colors. Um, and I've got my micro brushes, which I also get from Welburn Gourd Farms. And um, we're going to paint with that. Now, it just takes like a drop of this. I mean, jeez, a bottle of this goes a long way. Um, I'm going to put down a few colors. Let's see, we started off with, with the garnet. Uh, let's put a little aqua out here. And put a little green. A little drop of the green. And let's see here. I'd like to have uh, some yellow. Let me find the yellow. Sunflower. That's a pretty yellow color. We'll use that. Okay, just a drop of those four colors to start with. I'll be putting other colors out as we go along, but... We just want a little something to, to start with. And I'm thinking that um, we want to go with maybe some garnet here in the middle of this firebird on this triangle. Now, something to keep in mind with this is that dye is not as forgiving as paint. Dye will stain, so you got to be careful where you put it. Be real careful with your outlines that you don't go over the edges. Give me a piece of 
piece of paper towel up here. I'll wipe my brush down a little bit as I go. And I'm going to use a little bit of that garnet here on my turtle. Got some little triangles in that. I'll drop a little garnet in. And I'm going to put a little garnet here on my Copacelli. He's got some stripes around his belt there. Drop that in there. And then I've got a arrow back here on my goat. So we'll color that in. Just like that. And I've got some beads here on my dream catcher. Let's put make them garnet on here. Some little beads that hold the feathers on it. All right, that's looking good. Now I've wiped the brush down and we'll come in with a little of this aqua and I'm going to go right around this garnet piece here in this circle with the aqua I know it looks really dark now but it'll lighten up some as it dries garnet's starting to dry there so it's lightening up a little bit looking good okay Get a little bit more of that let's come over here and go around our, our little garnet places on our turtle Once we get it all painted in, I'll give a chance for the dye to really set good. And then I'll hit it with some Krylon. You could, if you wanted to, and you had the, the materials, you could resin this. This would make a pretty tabletop, too. If you resined it and put legs on it. It takes several coats of resin. I'm thinking maybe six or eight because you have to bury that leather. This leather is about an eighth of an inch thick. You have to put the resin down and then you have to allow it to dry and then come back with another coat. So you're talking several days of work. Now I'm going to put one stripe here of this color on Copacelli's belt. Alright. And then I'm going to take a little well, let's see. Well, 
what color feathers do I want to put on my dream catcher? I, I think these might make a pretty color on them feathers. Let's do them and this pretty aqua color. I need a little another little drop of aqua on my palette. There we go. you see a drop of it goes a long way so you don't want to get carried away squirting that out on the palette I'm even going to put some aqua up here on this Drag it right on down through the flower or through the feather. I love to paint. It is so relaxing. And I hope you enjoy watching me paint. It's just like coloring, only you're using a little brush. In this case, I'm using like a little, this is like a tiny little piece of uh, foam rubber on the end of a stick. And I love these little micro brushes because they get into all the little fine places, the little narrow spots. And you see how just putting a little bit of color to that uh, leather really changes the whole design. Just kind of makes it pop, brings it to life. Okay, so now I've got that. Um, the next color I had out was a little green. And let's take a little bit of green and put it, well, let's see, we'll put it here on the tail of our firebird. And then I think I want to go around this circle with green. haven't done anything to the concho yet. I'm going to put a little green in the center of the concho. And then I think I'll get these little leaves out here on the end of it with the green. Now, we need a little bit more green out here. And my turtle is going to be green. And we have these little insets on the turtle, which I'm going to do in yellow. So I'm going to grab the yellow and put that in these little insets first. One more.
wipe our brush out. And then we'll start in making the turtle green. You just do your outline first. Go around him. It's easier to stay in the lines if you've got an outline around it. Okay, we start there. Need a little more green on my palette. And we're going to go around these pieces here. Let's get the center of it done up. Okay, that's looking good there. Now we'll go around the outside of these and lay in a little outline. And I need a little more green on the palette. Another drop. And we start filling her in. We got our outlines laid in. Pretty simple to do.
Okay, Mr. Turtle's done. That's when I'm completely finished. Okay, now I'm going to use, let's see, um, I'm going to get some black out here on the palette. Put about three drops of that down there. Let's see here. We're going to take some black and I'm going to do the end of my feather with a little black up here. I'm going to make this look like an eagle feather. So the ends of the eagle feathers are black. And the rest of the feather is white. So we want to just do the top of it in black. I'm going to make the quill of my feather black as well. Okay. And while that's drying, I want to make the hoop of my dream catcher black up here and I'm going to leave the web of my dream catcher alone so as soon as I get this hoop done my dream catcher will be finished because I think that webbing says it all by itself. It doesn't need any help. Less is more sometimes. Now, on our Cocopelli, I'm going to do the ends of his feathers up here on his head in black. Just like that. And I'm going to do my bear paw down here in black. Get his little toes. Get a little more black out there on the, the palette. So here it is. Not gonna take much, but I'm not done with all the rest of them either. So we'll put another drop out there. Let's see where this goes. Got the outline now. We'll just go around the center of it like that. Looks good. And over here on Firebird, 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 we're gonna do. Let's see. I think I want to do something bright. Right copper. Bright copper. That sounds like a winner for the firebird. Let's do the firebird itself in the bright copper. So 
There's the head of the firebird. Here's the tail of the firebird. Then we're going to go around the edges of the wings. With the bright copper. Stay inside the lines. That's the that's the most important part. You don't want to look sloppy because you got outside the lines. Okay. Now I'm going to use some of this copper. And I'm going to put that on my concho over here. more of that on the palette. Just outline the part first and then color in the middle. Very simple. Just like you was taught when you was in school, grade school, on how to color. Now, let's see here. Turtle's done. Concho's done. I'm still working on this firebird. I'm going to come back in with some black. I'm going to do the, the insides of these wings with black. Little by little, we get it done. Just look ever so often, you got another piece done, another piece done. Need a little more black on the palette there. Just put another drop down. Color in the center. There we go. That's looking good. Touch up a little place there on that side. Now, let's see. 
my Cocopella, he's got another little band there in the center of him. It needs a little something. Uh, what are we going to put there? Hmm. Come in with some of this copper, maybe. Do that little stripe. Right there. Now, we got these two pieces done. Got this one done. Oh, I'm going to need some copper, I think, for my arrowhead down here. Finish Coke the Pelly, the goat, and the feather up there yet. It doesn't take very long to do these. I'd say the feather and the Coca Pelly, I both need some white on yet. The goat, I'm going to do his horns in the black. Let's grab a little black. Mark those horns off there. Stroke that paint in. Getting him painted up pretty good there. Now, um, I'm going to grab a little white. Put a little white out here on the palette. Let's pull this down just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. We'll come in here on the feather. Lay in some white up here. Really kind of hard to get in those little places without getting it outside the, the feather. Do the best you can on whatever it is you're painting. Even with these micro brushes, those are such tiny little spots. Now to sign this piece, I will just sign the back of it when I'm totally done with it. Put the hanger on it and such. You could engrave it to, on the front if you wanted, but I'm not going to do that. And you're probably seeing a little bit of difference to my screen today than yesterday. Uh, Shelly said that um, she's having trouble being able to see my screen on her phone. I don't have a smartphone, so I don't know what y'all see. But I told her, well, I can make screen bigger, but you're going to lose the pretty background. Um, so I'm trying to make the screen big enough that you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, 
feel free to leave comments and let me know what you think, if it works better for you. I've still got it scrolling across the top about my, my PayPal if you want to donate. It helps me buy supplies. And uh, be sure and like and subscribe to the channel. The address to my Etsy store is down there on the bottom, so you can check out the Etsy store. That's where I put a lot of my artwork for sale. Okay, so we got that feather done. Now we're going to pick up, well, white's kind of dried out there. Let me get another little shot of white going here. There we go. We want to grab a little white, shot of white and do a little... More on his feathers, on his headdress. Like that. Okay, that looks good. Now, we got to paint the goat and the cocapelli. And the goat... What color do I want to make my goat? I'm thinking we can do the goat with some espresso. It's a dark brown. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a drop of white in that and lighten it up. Just for the heck of it. Come on. Drop off there. I don't want to contaminate my white with the espresso, so drop off. There we go. Got to talk it into it. Now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to stir those around. They incorporate real well. And then start brushing it in. Outline him a little bit here. So we can fill in the head. Boy, somebody's just plunking the dickens out of me there. I reckon you can hear that going on in the background. Hangouts are going berserk. Bring that right down his chest. Just fill that in there. Take it down his legs. Come back up here on the neck. Get this side of the arrow. I'm going to turn this a little bit and make it a little easier for me to get to. Come in here on his tail. Come right up his back. Some of that dye might be still wet on there and I don't want to be dragging my arm through it and contaminating the piece, smearing it up. So we just turn it. Don't be afraid to turn your work. Make it easier for you to get to what you want to get to. back of him, down his leg, right around that era. Just like that. Get this leg, come around his belly. The way that's dry. It's a pretty color. That 
white mixed in that brown like that. Hoping I got enough to finish him up. Come on, make it go far enough. I don't want to have to mix more. Well, I guess I will, like it or no. Okay, we'll put down a drop of white, like that. Put the lid back on. Come in with a drop of the espresso. Nope, that's black. We don't want black. What is the espresso? There it is. Mix them up, mix the far out of them, just like that. Now we're we'll going to come in here and we're going to finish them up. Blend, just blend it all in. That actually looks like a real color on a goat right there. Kind of a Trying to think of what they do call that color. Um, hmm. My mind's drawing a blank. I want to say dapple. That's not the color I'm thinking. Um, hmm. Let's go back over that a little bit there. There's brown. Interesting, it kind of goes on brown, but as it dries, it turns to the white. That's looking good. All right, now we have to finish Cocapelli up here, and with him, I'm just going to go in with espresso on that, and that's black. Or no, that's the espresso. There we go. Just the espresso without the without the white mixed in. Plain old brown. See how fast that just goes on there? Get your outline in and then you just fill in the rest of it. Roan, that's the color I was thinking on. I, I knew it would come to me eventually. And my goat looks like a roan. I've actually had roan goats back when I was on the farm. Just about finished with it. You could come in and make more designs on it if you wanted to. I just don't want it to look too busy. I want it to be southwest without being overrun. Just 
but this is a good way to use up your scraps, make something pretty, create something of beauty. And it's a one-of-a-kind piece. You'll never see another one like it any place. There it is. All done. I'll turn it so you can see it there. There we go. That is the leather piece all painted. Now, the only thing is it needs is to dry and get a shot of Krylon, sign the back, and put the hanger on it, and it is finished. So with all that being said, I guess there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next time.